In this video, I'll review refinancing of short-term debt under both ASPE and IFRS using textbook question 13.8, which relates to learning objectives 3, 8, and 9. Here's our problem. On December 31, 2020, Hornsby Corporation had $1.2 million of short-term debt, classified as notes payable, due on February 2, 2021. On January 21, 2021, to ensure the company had enough funds for the short-term debt when it matured, the company issued 25,000 common shares for $38 a share, receiving $950,000 in proceeds after brokerage fees and other costs. Then on February 21st, the proceeds from the sale of the shares, along with an additional $250,000 in cash, were used to liquidate the $1.2 million in debt. The December 31st, 2020 balance sheet is issued on February 23rd, 2021. Our two requirements for this problem are to show how the $1.2 million in short-term debt would be presented under both ASPE and IFRS on the balance sheet or statement of financial position. Because we know how the debt was refinanced on the February 2, 2021 due date, which was prior to the finalization and release of the financial statements on February 23rd, we have to use that information to properly classify the debt on the balance sheet. We know the entire debt was liquidated using $250,000 in cash and the remaining $950,000 in share proceeds. The issue of shares is essentially a form of refinancing the debt with equity instead of full payment in cash. Thus, under ASPE, the company will report notes payable of $250,000 as a current liability and the remaining $950,000, classified as long-term debt, labeled notes payable refinanced in February 2021. Both are supported by a financial note disclosure that looks like this. As at December 31st, 2020, the company had notes payable totaling $1.2 million due on February 2nd. These notes were refinanced on their due date to the extent of $950,000 received from the issuance of common shares on January 1st, 2021. The balance of $250,000 was liquidated using current assets. Now under IFRS, this is a bit of a different animal. Since the debt's due within 12 months from the reporting date, the entire $1.2 million is classified as a current liability. And this classification holds even if long-term financing has been completed before the statements are released. The only exception for continuing the long-term classification is if at the balance sheet date, the company expects to refinance or roll over the debt under an existing agreement for at least 12 months, and the decision is solely at its discretion. IFRS has a strict requirement that the agreement must be firm at the balance sheet date. For requirement C, considering only the effect of the 1.2 million short-term notes payable, would the company's current ratio appear higher if it followed ASPE or IFRS? And we're asked to discuss our answer from a creditor's perspective. Well, we know the current ratio is calculated as current assets divided by current liabilities. So if the company follows ASPE, the current liabilities in the denominator of the equation would include only $250,000 related to short-term notes payable. If the company followed IFRS, the current liabilities would include a much higher $1.2 million related to the short-term notes payable in the denominator. As a result, with a smaller number in the denominator, the current ratio would be higher if the company followed ASPE. Now, our creditor would want to assess a company's liquidity and solvency and should be aware that the classification of short-term notes payable on the balance sheet has a significant impact on key ratios, including the current ratio. Of course, the creditor should refer to all information in the financial statements, including the notes, to determine the financial position of the company, especially when comparing performance to that of another company with financial statements prepared under a different standard. 